you know, all you old school wrestling fans in the upper Midwest, you know that Thanksgiving night was always one of the biggest shows of the year. And tonight, on another fucking podcast, I'm bringing you one. We step inside this cage and we debate, we throw down, we have a grudge match. Kiss, Love Gun versus Rock and Roll Over. Joining me inside of this cage from Megadeth, David Olsen, from Faster Pussycat, Chad Stewart. From that metal show, Don Jameson, and yes, he's back. Season one of The Real World, Andre Como. We do this, and we do this right. It is the throwdown. It is record versus record, song versus song. Rock and roll over, 1976. Love Gun, 1977. It is a drunken summit. It is another fucking podcast. Let's roll this shit. Hi, this is Bobby Brown, and welcome to another fucking podcast. My liver's all twisted up. But you know what I did? I loaded up with alcohol. More specifically, vodka, whiskey, beer, tequila, more beer, more vodka, more whiskey, and more beer. Who wants an orange whip? Orange whip? Orange whip? Three orange whips. So you're bored, are you? I've come here to break your monotony. Let me have my piece, because I'm shooting with this one, folks. I don't care, man. The unscripted, uncensored, loose cannon of commentary. Why did you say that? Why? Why? You come out with stink like that? Poop. You poop out. Poop out of your mouth. See, son? Old legends never die, they just lose weight. Like a legend and an out-of-work bum look a lot alike, Daddy. I've got a midget friend, an albino friend, and another friend who thinks Lord of the Rings is real. Together we call ourselves the Unfuckables. Which time is in? Let the fun begin! Party time! You got you an asshole, man. <laughs> I've never heard of Van We record on this computer. There we go. Hello, Hollywood. Hello, world. And hello, my loyal minions. It is good to see you, and it's always good to be seen. My name is Izzy Presley, and this is The Drunken Summit, where we are going to be debating Kiss Rock and Roll Over versus Kiss Love Gun. It is going to be a good fight, and uh, also be remembering the late, great Eric Carr. Uh, Chad Stewart, Professor Pussycat is here. Andre Como, season one of The Real World is here. Don Jameson just joined us. Oh, that fucking guy. There's Don Jameson. Yeah, uh, baby. Gonna have a couple more people pop it in. Up, mama? So, uh, let me get you guys unmuted uh, so you can talk over me as I'm doing this. Uh, don't forget, uh, oh, I didn't tell you guys this. Uh, the Drunken Summit for Christmas will be all listeners. So if you want to get in on this as a listener, maybe we'll get a couple of uh, future past call, uh, people from the uh, from the All-Star ones to pop in too. We'll, we'll see what happens, and I'm sure it'll be a kiss one. But uh, that will be the Tuesday right before Christmas. So everybody hit me up if you do want to be in it. Probably, be, oh, is that a burrito, Don? Oh, yeah, something like that. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Also, Thursday night, 9 p.m. California time, uh, midnight on the East Coast. 
brand new merch will be available for Black Friday, and there will be a poster that is utterly disgusting and hilarious. You can also get that as a beach towel and as a shower curtain and brand new shirts and all that shit. And it is going to be disgusting and awesome. So there we go. If you guys like what I do, real Izzy Presley on the, uh, the Venmo and, uh, oh yeah. I'm just oh, waving the chat. Oh, he's waving. What's the up, chat. Jamo? Fucking perfect. What's up, COVID Chad? How are you, baby? You're, you're the original. I am. Oh, gee, I'm a super soldier. I'm a super soldier now. (laughs) Nice. Finally, you. Hey, if the Rona, hey, nothing. Truly, nothing can kill me now. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Not even mustard. No, no mustard. No tender. (laughs) No nada. I'm gonna live forever. Fuck you guys. (laughs) I'm happy to see you, man. Good to see you too. How are things, man? Yeah, Chad, what's going on? Let's uh, let's go around the uh, panel and say hi as we're waiting for Gargano to show up. Uh, hi. hi, Eric Carr. Eric Carr. We need to get on that as soon as possible. But uh, yeah, how are you, Izzy? What's going on with you? Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Don has his uh, fake burrito, turkey burrito, chomping on. There's a gravy in there, too? There is not. Ah, there should be. Is there beer? I don't, be- I don't believe in it. I got wine. <laughs> First, in honor of that. Chad, I got red wine. Nice. Do a, do a shot of Jack Daniels for the working man. Cheers. Cheers. Don, oh. what's new with you? When you what you're gigging, lucky fucker. Yeah, but that, as soon as I ride him in, they, they get crossed off again now because all these new curfews and shit. But yeah, you know, it's uh, it's been okay. But uh, yeah, still got a long way to go. I feel bad for you fuckers who play music yeah. with real talent. Yeah. Well, the guy that just joined us j- just did some gigs this weekend, Mr. David Ellison. Gentlemen. Hey, Dave. How are you, How are you, How are you buddy? Hey, Come on, on, David. Long time no see. Yes, indeed. But it's been like two, <laughs> like two or three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we, we get around, don't we? Yes, we do. That's you guys were That's just funny. up in what, Green Bay? No, we, I was with him at the, uh, at the, night, at the Ranger. At Ranger Danger in at Arizona. Ranger, yeah, oh, yeah. We okay. were there. Yeah, I was just out. Yeah, I was just up in, um, I did Peak in Illinois, uh, Indianapolis, Chicago, Green Bay, and then we did a live stream in Madison on Sunday. So, yeah, I just, I just did. And it's so funny because in Peak in Illinois, which is very much, there's like a great little music venue there. It's like very much like the VFW Elks Lodge kind of vibe, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and some of the fans were there like at the meet and greet at like the merch table afterwards going, how come you guys are wearing masks? And it was like, uh, I have not watched the news for like the last nine months. And, uh, you know, Chicago was, was really ready to lock down. So we, you know, uh, we were at some point, we kind of just stopped promoting it all by ourselves on our own. I mean, it wasn't like, Hey, we're going to be in Chicago tonight. At some point you're like, okay, they're shutting down. Like we're going to shut up and yeah. had a full house though. I mean, people were there and we masked up and lathered up and funny, my buddy, John Acolino, he, uh, who played guitar and icon he's got this new product that basically just slather it all over your face you get it in your eyes and your tear ducts and your nose and stuff and it's basically like another line of defense of like an antibacterial wow yeah. what, what is that david huh what is that called david it's called theraworks oh yeah yeah and I, I assume you can buy it online i guess i should ask him and find out but it's uh I slathered up with that stuff and, you know, went in and put my mask on and me and Bumblefoot masked up and you know, ah, the bumble. We, yeah. But then green Bay, like no one's going to mask on. Like, well, I mean, right. we did, but the audience is just kind of like, you know, COVID what's that? Well, Dave, you got to remember <laughs> it, Wisconsin. They're so drunk that it's not going to matter. It is you know, true. It's, it's going to wash around. Uh, we, the, we, so we you played it. That. You played at the new fat heads. Did they move the Muppets uh, balcony over to that? uh no balcony no muppets but some fat heads for sure copy because the, <laughs> the, uh, the old place they had that little uh muppets balcony with statler and waldorf up in the corner overlooking yeah. the stage which was Bon and i were painted on the wall i think too oh yeah they did it was, it was it was actually it was a great venue it sounded great um of all the venues it had the best sound had a great stage good pa it was yeah no it was, it was good man it was uh 
You know, I tell you what, people were starved for entertainment. You know, in Madison on Sunday, we basically, you know, most people charge for, um, you know, tickets for like a live stream. And we, we talked about it. Me and Tom talked about it. It's like, you know what? Screw it. We'll just pay the money. We'll basically pay for the production. We'll write the check, which we did. And just put it up online, you know, and people were happy to just have something up online to watch. And, right. you know, now there's a little, you know, a little clip of our tour essentially sitting up online forever, kind of lives on the web. And, you know, cool. I think at this point in time, fans are, you know, it's just one moment where everybody's just so happy to see anything, you know, and that's just people getting together and playing and gigging. So, yeah, I'm glad we did it. I'm glad we went out and rocked it for a week, you know. Very cool. Uh, so we're going to get into Eric Carr just for a minute here and a uh, pair of respects because today is the day that we lost him, wow. as, of course, as well as Freddie Mercury. But uh, really quick before we get into that, because I, I know, Dave, you might be a very limited time. So if you want to go throw, go out and pimp your record, your cover record that just came Well, it's out. funny that uh, it's funny. You should mention that. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Yeah. So the no cover record actually just came out this week. And it's funny, we Tom did a cover of Beth with Tyson Leslie. Yeah. Nashville. Oh, awesome. And it's funny, I didn't even know this, but he, Tom, the version of Beth that he really was listening to to kind of get, get in the spirit of this was the Eric Carr version off of Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits, whatever. I didn't even know Eric Carr did a version of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Peter Chris guy, you know? Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I mean, that's going to be one of the new shirts that says, I can't count past Peter Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrilege. I love it. I love it. So, uh, let, um, Dave, do you have any Eric Carr memories? Did you ever get to meet Eric? I, I have. I have only two. One is uh, we we had a Megadeth. We had an accountant or our lawyer actually was over on Beverly Drive, Beverly Hills, and I remember getting in the elevator one day, and he was there. Uh, got in uh, healthy and you know on top of the world at that point. <clears throat> um, so he and a handler or somebody got in the elevator. I'm like, wow, cool. It's Eric Carr. And then the only other one was a more sad one. Um, in 91, uh, we played the Foundations Forum um, at the Sher- I think Sheraton Hotel at LAX there. Bob Party put those together. And we played uh, the song Go to Hell. And Gene and Paul were invited down to give us the award. I think I actually have it right here. The uh, Best Thrash Band Award. Um, and we went backstage after that and did a quick little kind of, you know, Q and a thing with, uh, the media and a couple of fans. And I remember somebody asked, um, asked Paul, you know, how's Eric doing? And I did not know he was sick at that time. And, and mm-hmm. I remember he hung his head and again, it was just, this very sorry. He goes, he's not well, he's, he's not doing well. And then that was kind of, and it was a, it was a pin drop in the room kind of moment you could tell it yeah. was like thing and and i guess just shortly after that he passed and so those are my only two eric Carr moments of my well life. obviously i mean obviously that was way pre-internet and tra- i didn't even know he was sick until i saw it on mtv that he died i didn't either yeah. i had no idea until we we're just literally in the room in that moment it was like eric wow i don't I, you know you couldn't ask him what's wrong you know <laughs> this right, would have right. been very inappropriate you know so yeah he was um yeah, that's kind of what my, my feeling was too. Was like I didn't even know, and then he was gone, and that was it. So, mm-hmm. Andre, um, you're an East Coast guy, Andre Como, season one of the Real World. Hey, 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 brother. <laughs> you're an East Coaster. Did you uh, did you ever have any um, uh, meetings with Eric? Did you ever meet Eric? Or I, you know, sadly, I never did meet Eric Carr. Although uh, I did get him to, I did get to see uh, him perform with Kiss at least five or six times um my first show ever was the creatures of the night tour and uh and i you know huge fan huge fan of that lineup specifically um with eric carr and vinnie vincent i I just think that uh that was uh, an amazing show and an amazing tour um and I, i feel very lucky to have seen it because they were really it was a rebirth for that band what about you don yeah, I never met him. So I'm, you know, play, play with Kiss, you know, uh, a couple times. And, uh, but I, you know, Eddie, you know, when we started doing that metal show, Eddie always used to say to Jim and I, man, I, I, I wish you guys could have known Eric because he was such a ball buster and such a, a prankster like you guys, man, he would have really loved you and you guys would have loved him. So, you know, I just, it's, nobody's ever had a bad word to say about the guy and, it just it made me kind of feel nice, like, yeah, I, we probably would have been friends if we ever had the chance. Mm-hmm. You would have. 
Did you know cool. him, Chad? I met him twice. And he was exactly, Don and I have been on tour together, what, three or four times now at this point? And oh. it's nothing but ball busting, and Eric was exactly that guy. <laughs> so he, he was a mound of hair and ball busting. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. As a drummer, what do you guys- uh, My favorite uh, drummer in Kiss, ever. Okay. Sorry, Eric Singer, I love you dearly, but car wins. Really? Okay. That's well. That's that's my two cents. Yeah, you're. Oh, yeah, wait of a course. minute. Wait Discuss. a minute. I have another. Who who is the guy? It's Ace's manager, John, uh, or or Tensky or or Sesky. He has Eric Carr's kit. I remember it was at his house, at his apartment. The, the one with the symbols on it. Interview. Yeah, and he's got his. <laughs> he's got the Eric Carr drum kit there, like the kit, right, with the Japanese. Yeah. Writing on it, and yeah. Uh, I was like, wow, that's, that's cool. That kid looks like Eric. He goes, it is, you know, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if there was a family negotiation on that. I don't know how <laughs> you don't just end up with Kiss stuff in your house, you know, so God right. bless him. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's funny with Kiss, you know, I'm a 70s Kiss guy, you know, so it's funny, yeah. my friend, so Tom Hazard, I always joke, he's an 80s Kiss guy. I'm a 70s Kiss guy. So really once Ace left, I mean, I didn't even buy Dynasty. I mean, I was done Kiss <gasps> Alive. Too, that was it wow and, I, and, and i'm out yeah so i i'm probably not I told you we place. had this conversation izzy i told you that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> once the lunch boxes came and the children were there i'm out because that was the cold pool i mean i don't know christine's 16 and then the fans are 14 i don't know it's weird you know so i, I <laughs> had a good conscience i couldn't participate what are you like 70 <laughs> 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 no it was just it, it was just weird you know it was it and it was a strange time it was funny it's funny the kiss had a big disco hit you know i think desmond yeah. child and paul wrote that too and I'm <clears> loving <throat> you and you know being on tour with them and playing with them now you know i i always go out and i watch the show we play play and do the mega death set and i go out and i'd be a kiss fan for an mm -hmm. hour and a half and watch the show and it's funny when you hit that song i mean you know women love it it's it, it's right I, I get it now it's a great song um, but it was not my jam back in the day, you know. I mean, again, mm. once once side four, the original tunes from Kiss Alive two ended, that I was out. That was it for me. Well, my look, my thing with Eric is like I thought he was amazing for what they did in the in the eighties. He was absolutely perfect for what they did. But I, I just didn't like how he played the Peter stuff. See, he he didn't have that swing. That's not taking away from him as a drummer because he's more of a bottom guy, totally different style. Yeah, he was more of a, of a metal guy where Peter was more of a jazz guy, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but I, I disagree with you. He did have a swing. It was different to Peter's, but he right, definitely right. swung. And all that, if you listen to, like his parts are really comp complicated if you if you actually sit down. I mean, not complicated, but interesting. That all the Tom stuff that he would do in between. I mean, it was really, he, he was almost like a Mick Fleetwood kind of guy. If you if you break down the parts, it was really interesting what he what he did with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not a drummer. Like I said, I can't count past Peter Chris. And he so. was a pounder. I do know that much. Just yeah. Like, yeah. He was definitely a pounder. Whereas, you know, Peter was, like I say, he was a jazz guy, a little more of a finesse guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can just hear their, the difference in their, in their influences. Uh, yeah. You know, Peter was such a Gene Krupa kind of uh, big band, even, um, yeah. you know, style drummer. And, and Eric Carr came from, you know, Big Rock, John Bonham. You know, that, that yeah, was- uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, let's do this. First half of the show brought to you by Beater Amplification. That's two E's, beateramplification.com. You can see that beautiful uh, beater right behind me. 100 watts of testicular fortitude. Pull, your, pull two tubes. You got yourself a 50 and uh, three channels. That's just fucking amazing. Check them out, beateramplification.com. Hit them up on Facebook as well. And we're good friends over at Mackie. You want to get into podcasting, you want to get into home recording, hit up our good friends over at Mackie. Check out the studio bundles. Very affordable way to do it. Less than 500 bucks, kids. You can get started very, very easy because we all know we need more fucking podcasts. So get on it. Get on it. <laughs> COVID um, podcast. Yeah, COVID podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's uh, let's start talking about these records a little bit. Rock and Roll Over versus uh, Love Gun. Um, Rock and Roll Over came out. Obviously, it's the same costumes as as Destroyer, and you know Love Gun. They they switched it up. I mean, what are your initial thoughts, Dave? I mean, David. Well, that what? was when I saw them. My first my first Kiss record I bought was Destroyer on cassette, probably summer nineteen seventy six. Um, I saw them uh, uh, February 6, 1977 at the Met Center in Bloomington, uh, Minnesota, and uh, Uriah Heep opening. 
And um, it was, and it was, it was, it was interesting. They, they did, they did have the same costumes. In fact, it's funny how from, obviously Kiss Alive set them up. That, that was the formula. Yeah. You do three studio records and then you bang yeah. the live album. They did it with Frampton. They did it with Grand Funk. It was just, a, that was just the formula back in the day, right? Then you do the big double live mm -hmm. record. Ted Nugent, quite honestly, did the same thing. Um, double Live Gonzo, I think, right? Um, and yeah. so, you know, then they took their time and they made Destroyer. And it's funny to hear the Kiss guys talk sometimes not so favorably about that record. And, and I've made records like that that are very difficult. They're challenging. They push you way out of your comfort zone. Probably working with Bob Ezrin as a producer who is very not Kiss kind of guy. Kind of guy. In fact, I listen to Destroyer now. It sounds, to me, it, it's, it's just a, it's an Alice Cooper record. You know, flaming you at the backing vocals. Yeah. You know, if you if you took the Kiss guys out and put Alice Cooper guys in, it's a freaking Alice Cooper record. Um, and it changed how I listened to that record, quite honestly. Yeah, Detroit Rock City, totally. Detroit. Yeah, and, and, yeah. yeah and, and and Sweet Pain, all that stuff. I mean, that could be Alice Cooper singing that stuff, you know. So, right. but then I, you know, then Rock and Roll Over came out, way more stripped down. Um, quite honestly, I was not as big of a fan of that record. Um, you know, Mr. Speed um was a great riff um some of the those things were were awesome um and it is interesting how they did destroyer rock and roll over love gun they just banged those those re like every six months a new record came yeah. out and they did like you said they did change the costumes for love gun and then right into to kiss alive too so i mean that was a really prolific era what i found was interesting about that is destroyer they had they had concepts and themes like they really they had to get off the road and start digging deep mm -hmm. but and rock and roll over was you know making love um you know again mr speed hard luck woman again kind of trying to replicate the beth you know right, the beth right. cookie cutter let's do a ballad kind of thing um, not nearly as cool, I don't think. A Paul Stanley song rather than a Peter Chris written song. Yeah, um, yeah. Best I remember. Um, but um, you know, then by it's funny by by Love Gun, you know, again now now they've been on the road too long because all they're doing is getting blowjobs and getting laid and they got nothing to write about. You know, I mean the content yeah, right. you can see as an yeah, artist. Yeah. yeah knowing like, okay, we're coming off the road. We're going to make a record. What are we writing about? I mean, Love Gun was just pure freaking backstage obliteration of just groupies and plasma mm -hmm. caster and, you know, all the stuff. <laughs> I mean, right. these guys well, have been Don's on the favorite record. Right. Yeah, these guys have been on the road too long. They can get them off the road so they can write some real material. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, well, as great you... as those records were, you know, so that's kind of my feeling. And, and Rock and Roll Over was not quite as decadent. I think, mm -hmm. I think Paul Stanley, quite honestly, really nailed a lot of great stuff on rock and roll over as a guitar player um i've always admired how paul plays the voicings in his chords are very yeah yeah um you know a lot of kind of stonesy stuff and more that had kind of a more not heavy metal but but pretty cool hard rock great freaking rhythm guitar playing you know mm -hmm. so do you guys think that uh i mean because that was like that was like the beginning of super kiss that's when it was really starting to explode and get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger do you guys think that uh like coming off of destroyer going into rock and roll over that they kind of because i mean destroyer is not really the sex and drugs record you know uh, but then you go into rock and roll over and you get all of that stuff coming back like they did in the first three records i mean and my my feeling is, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm sure Bob Ezrin wasn't going to put out just a dumb it down record. You know, Bob Ezrin raised the bar, I think, on right. every level. You know, I mean, again, because even even Dressed to Kill, which is you read the Kiss books, I think um, uh, the Casablanca president produced that, right? Um, uh, Neil Bogart? Did? Yeah, Neil Bogart. Yeah, I think Neil Bogart produced that. He got involved heavily on that record and helped them with themes. And again, they kind of had some, an overseer, you know? Um, you know, it's funny, Eddie Kramer, I talked to Eddie and he told me, I think Rock and Roll Over, didn't they record that in a theater over in New Jersey? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. And I remember him talking about hitting a, hitting a cardboard box is like the click track for, for Peter to cut, you know, to cut to. But again, I can't imagine these guys coming off the road with, with new material, at least eight songs and going right in and cutting a record, which probably they had a <clears> month and then straight back out on the road again. I mean, I don't know how they wrote that much material back three records back to back between well destroyer but then certainly rock and roll over to love gun two records at least that they wrote really pretty much on the road okay is a hell of a drug <laughs> <laughs> 
Don, you were going to jump in there. Well, I was just, <clears throat> maybe it's good for me to follow up with David. Um, and uh, David and I have talked Kiss many times, and I'm surprised that we sort of have the same take on Rock and Roll Over. So we'll get the unpopular opinions out of the way so you guys can <laughs> flaunt over how it's the best Kiss album. When <laughs> in reality, it's, it's a good Kiss album. It's not a great Kiss album to me. Um, and, and the biggest thing, um, and this is pro probably also because, uh, like David said, my first Kiss album was Destroyer. So, so my first impression was this huge production, the orchestra, the, you know, just that big giant booming sound. And then this being stripped down and even the cover, it was like you went from these comic book heroes, superhero rock stars on the front to a silly cartoon. Everything felt like a step down. Um, also hearing some of these songs for the first time on a live two and how much more energy and a better mm -hmm. tempo, you know, I mean, I can't listen to I Want You or Dr. Love or Making Love off this studio record. Cause to me, if it's just they're flat, um, the flat, the, the tempo is, is slow. Um, they just, they just don't make it for me. There's a, I feel like there's a couple clunkers on here. But I still think it's a very good Kiss album. Yeah, very, yeah, yeah. This is a very unpopular opinion. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I have the, <laughs> I have an also, also have an unpopular opinion that Love Them, Leave Them is a 70s version of Burn Bitch Burn. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> another filler song. Yeah, another right. filler song. Um, so what we're going to do, so like in about five minutes, we're going to take a break. We come back and we'll go re song by song. So it's going to be a short show tonight. Cause Don, you have a heart out at seven. Chad, 6.50. Uh, Dave, I know you don't have a whole lot of time, but uh, do, you, do you have enough time to go through that? Uh, you know, and for you and for Kiss and for y'all here, I sure I'll make. That oh, video. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Uh, so, I mean, just blanket. I mean, coming off of Rock and Roll Over into Love Gun, I mean, we're just, just initial thoughts on Love Gun. Andre, you've been awfully quiet sitting up there. Like well, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm loving the, the difference of opinions. I, I, I happen to think that uh, uh, Rock and Roll Over is an extremely solid album. Um, I, I, I think I mentioned uh, uh, on, on a thread of yours, Izzy, that uh, I think the high points on, um, on uh, Love Gun are stronger, but, um, but Rock and Roll Over is a, a really solid album. I think that Ace's playing on both albums are uh, is just yeah. uh, is stellar, and um, and that the you know Paul's songwriting on both albums is very strong. I think that you know, frankly, I think Paul's songs on uh, Rock and Roll Over are even a little stronger. I think that you know that I think Rock uh, Love Gun has a couple of um, soft soft spots songwriting wise and and song wise yeah. maybe. Maybe uh, tomorrow and tonight isn't uh, up to snuff, or um, hooligan. You know, not so much. But um, I think that both albums are are really you know great albums, and they are the the uh, the the bedrock of why you know we're all right. big such big fans. You know, to this Do day. We, well, it's funny because Paul always said that Ace never um, Ace never developed after a certain point and this i mean I, I, if you want to look back and look at the that timeline it sounds like that was like the apex of aces playing even though i prefer the playing on the first three records more than the second three records oh i think aces playing on those on those uh two records specifically stellar i think his solos are just mm -hmm. so uh inventive and um they are the uh you know it's it's what we measure up all of Ace's work, you know. Post but let's face it, we can also hear now in hindsight where where Bob Kulik stepped in. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yes, we can. You know, and and that's not to call Ace out on anything, but he right. kind of admitted it even in his own book, and and yeah. kind of got some of the efforts, you know, like eh, you know, screw these guys, and mm -hmm. I'm kind of, you know, sort of kind of half mentally checked out on some things. Right, and, right. You know, and again, this is a band that is reinventing, they're in, in, in not reinventing, inventing history. I mean, stuff yeah. Beatles level. I remember, see, so remember that thing on on ABC? They had that big uh, 
nighttime TV show, Kiss, the biggest merchandising band in the world. And you know yep. what I mean? I mean, it was, this was big stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. this was, this was the Beatles all Heavy over. Heavy metal Beatles. It yeah. was, it was. You know, Absolutely. That, you mentioned that because, you know, Tomorrow and Tonight and Then She Kissed Me are covers, right? Because Tomorrow and Tonight, that's a cover, right? Well, I didn't think that was a cover. I, I mean, if it is, that's, uh, that's news to me. Hold on, let's find out. Hold on, I'll tell you. I got Go the ahead. final. Yeah, uh, the, the, tomorrow the, tonight written by paul stanley yeah 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 and again i you know kind of a throwback it sounds like paul kind of going back and maybe pulling out a song he wrote from his younger days we yeah. could like hey here's a demo i had from when i was eight and 17 in my you know high school cover band you know i mean it mm -hmm. I, I would agree that i think the development of some of the some of the the songs on and again maybe they were reaching for material again it's hard to bang out a record when you're right on, and rock and roll over to her selling out arenas you know keeping the mm -hmm. keeping the machine going you know and then love gun of course features the first time ace sang lead on shock yeah. yeah. that was really the takeaway track i think that for all of us was the one because it's like what is this spaceman superhero actually sound we never heard him talk other than maybe giggle in a few <laughs> interviews you know what I mean? But we never really even knew what he sounded like, right? And then I was right, right. hear him saying it. Then all of a sudden, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, for, for whatever reason, I don't, and again, maybe it's the, my prejudice from going from just Destroyer to Rock and Roll Over, but, you know, Love Gun to me, just a, a little bit more overall, uh, ple more pleasurable listening experience. Maybe part of it is it's hearing Ace for the first time singing. Um, you know, I think there's just as many weak tracks on both. So I don't, I don't yeah. think one has more solid tracks than the other. Uh, maybe I like the production a little bit more on Love Gun. And then also maybe it's the actual Love Gun <laughs> the that, came, ah. that came with it. And I have an intact one right here, motherfuckers. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, uh, at about 3 o'clock uh, Hotel California time, I put up a poll on Twitter. And uh, up until now, Rock and Roll Over was always edging at like 51 52%. But right now, 54 votes. Love Gun, 52%. And Rock and Roll Over at 48 mm -hmm. So here, let's do this. We will take a short minute and a half did you, use did you use dominion software um because <laughs> to do yes, a recap. yes i did <laughs> yeah exactly okay. yeah we had to do that <laughs> we had to do that on the van halen one um i had to go back and watch it again and get the recount to find out that 5150 actually did beat eat him and smile oh and boy of course, that's the sacrilege day, but okay the, the, the only, i count again the only day only dave bobos are the ones that are still commenting on the on the on the youtube no, it's all it's Dave, man. It's Dave. It's not. It always sounds like Van Halen. It's Dave. No, we get all those. So, anyways, let's do this. David Elveson, Don Jameson, Andre Como, Chad Stewart. We'll be back in two minutes and two seconds to go track versus track. Love Gun, Rock and Roll Over. It is another fucking podcast. Rockstarleatherworks.com is your home for badass rock and roll gear. Featuring 100% handmade leather bands, watches, cuffs, bracelets, and more, Rockstar Leatherworks has something for everybody. Whether you are going to the show or you are in it, you can find something to fit your needs. Choose from a variety of designs or create your own masterpiece. Their bands and watches are second to none. They also ship internationally. Who needs a stage to be a rock star? Check out rockstarleatherworks.com. Hey ladies, Sass Pants Designs will take that band shirt that everyone has and make it your own in a flattering, sassy, and simple way. There are one-of-a-kind tank tops, halter tops, lace-up tees, and tube top dresses already in stock. Check out the online store at sasspantsrocks.com and like Sass Pants Designs on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for special offers and custom orders. Use the code IZZY25 for 25% off of your entire order at sasspantsrocks.com. That's sasspantsrocks.com. Let Sass Pants make you the envy of the party. Rockwood Saloon Authentic Apparel takes rock and roll fashion to a new level with their tees and tanks for men and women. They also make custom shirts, jackets, vests, pants, hoodies, beanies, and more. The Rockwood Graphics Department can design anything from your logo. 
T-shirt design, promo posters, band swag, and printed at great prices. From tour shirts and custom stage gear to killer threads from the street to the stage, Rockwood Saloon has it all. Rockwood Saloon, authentic rock and roll apparel for stage and street. World Tour tested for quality, comfort, style, and durability. Check them out at www.rockwoodsaloon.com. That's rockwoodsaloon.com. Hey, what's going on? This is Tom Arnold. I like uh, fat women and cocaine. And you're listening to Izzy Presley here on another uh, fucking podcast. And uh, I know Izzy. Uh, from Cocaine Anonymous meetings. I've actually uh, seen him at the meetings with uh, uh, Ace Von Johnson from, uh, I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but Ace has got a bad Coke problem. And uh, his sponsor is uh, is uh, Josh Todd from, and again, I shouldn't say this out loud, but Josh is a sponsor for Buck Cherry. He's addicted to upskirt porn. And, uh, and they're both being sponsored by the Eagles. The, uh, the whole band, the Eagles. There's, Anyways, uh, another fucking podcast right here with Izzy Presley. And uh, call your sponsor. Fucking A. God bless Craig Gass. Uh, back second up the show brought to you by AMP Productions Laser. It's APLaser.com. Uh, the holidays are coming up. You want to get someone you love, something very, very special. Hit up APLaser.com and get something laser engraved. Or you can buy them the another effing podcast roadie pack that comes with a very, very, very nice Zippo type lighter, a coffee tumbler, a flask, and a, uh, I think a bottle opener. I think that's what comes with it and, and a condom and a condom yes thank you don jameson and uh and uh it also comes with a uh, a joke about a moth um also our good friend john palumbo hit him up john palumbo design.com you have a band you have a website mm-hmm. you have a business you need a website done you need a logo done hit up john palumbo at john I love palumbo him. design you Terrible. love john palumbo oh great uh a great note from the uh the chat room dick chasen says too bad they didn't give black ace a chance to play on an album <laughs> from the movie yeah from the movie yes yes absolutely so uh we are still looking at oh my god we are at 50 percent. it is dead tied right now so this <laughs> may it may be this internet poll might be the tiebreaker because we got six of us right here. So here we go. Track versus track. Kicking off. Rock and roll over. I want you versus I stole your love. Wow. Chad? There's no, there's, there's no fucking contest. I stole your love wins. Agreed. Oh, I agree. two. Everybody? All right. I want you to use a great song, but I still love is way better. Let's yeah, let's make it anonymous. Yep. Um uh, I, I I I agree. I love I want you, but I think the reason I don't I didn't like it at first because I didn't like the live version of it on a live too. I didn't like the whole crowd gimmick he did. But yeah, I still <laughs> your love fucking rules. Take me versus that beautiful classic Christine 16. Don Jameson, you want to take this one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, yeah, I've, been, I've, I've had the Christine 16 joke in my act for many years, but uh, because people actually know that song, if I did a take me joke, uh, it wouldn't go over as well, but that is the better song, so I'm going to go take me. Okay. Andre? You know, I, I like them both for different reasons. Uh, I, I got to go with Christine 16 as it's uh, it's got um, the, uh, you know, the reference to high school girls. And, uh, <laughs> it, it really puts right. Gene in that pedo character, uh, in that character that, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's Gene classic. Epstein. Hadwick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, me to me into 16. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Ellison, who uh, was actually playing in the era where you could get away with that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know. I know. I, I, it's, it's like that and Winger, she's only 17. Yeah, I mean, they, right. They, she's 46 really now, Dave. Like, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, look, regardless of you'd get arrested if you wrote a song like that today, just the reality is that that's the better song to me, period. Christine yeah. 16. Wow. Yeah. We, uh, oh, what? okay. Chad was 16. I'm yeah. take me. I'm take me. So wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Did I not mark somebody down? Andre, you were uh, Christine 16. Christine 16. Christine 16. Chad was Christine 16. And Don, you were Christine 16? Nope. No, take me. Oh, you take me. Okay. 
What were you? One, two, three, four, five. I'm take me. That's the right answer. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right, so it's four to two. Yes, all right, math. Anyways, now we go to Dr. Love versus Got Love for Sale, Gene versus Gene. Mm. Call okay. Dr. Love. I mean, come on, the solo alone. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, Dr. Love, better song. Love for Sale, probably better recording. There Dr. you go. Dr. Love is so flat on on rock and roll over that i mean once you hear it for real you're like yeah ah, that sucks it's a great song it's a it's the better song but love for sales is better recording so what's your choice i'm going dr love but with fucking yeah donald i gotta go i gotta go got love for sale because of what chad i am because what chad said is true yeah. i mean you know, it's just the production's flatter than uh, Chad's snare drum sounds. <laughs> <laughs> David. Uh, yeah. Your background I, I, vocals, I, I, I don't know what you wanted. Yeah, no, call, call on Dr. Love for sure. In fact, that's one of those those songs, you know, to me, a great song. You can identify it in the first measure. Don, da, da, da. You yeah. don't need to hear yeah. any more than yeah. that, and you know what song it is. That's yeah. how iconic it is. I will say, however, how good the bass tone is on all of Love Gun. It's actually very good. Yeah. It's a really good freaking bass tone, you know? And Gene always had great tone. I always loved his tone. But yeah, song-wise, for sure, calling Dr. Love. Yep, I have to go with Dr. Love as well. As much as I love Got Love for Sale, I think it's a great fucking song. I have to go Dr. Love. <laughs> the solo on Calling Dr. Love is the, one of the coolest A solos there is. I mean... Agreed. Uh, yes. Yeah just glorious it's uh it wins <laughs> yep know? yep all right ladies room versus shock me that's uh, i think that's a zach morris no brainer all the way around right uh, nope all, whoa nope i'm going ladies room really you know, you know what's funny ladies room kind of goes back to uh room service off the yeah hill. Also great. Gun, 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 gun. Yeah. And same lyric and same kind of, yeah, yeah. I'm going ladies room. Sorry to All fucking right. throw a bee in your bonnet, but. <laughs> but then again, I'm always going ladies room. <laughs> That's an excellent Where you point. belong. <laughs> Thanks, Don. <laughs> yeah, Andre. Gonna, yeah, I got to go with shock me. Got to go shock me. Shock me. It's iconic. David? Uh, David? Yeah, definitely shock me for sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah, shock me. One, two, three, four. I was miscounting before. I'm like, hey, wait, we have six. No, we have five. We have five, which makes it even better. All right. Baby Driver versus Tomorrow and Tonight. I don't think this is a throwaway. I think this is a... Okay. I'm going to go first on this because as... Often, I, I always skip the version on uh, on a live too. But um, between these two songs, I'm gonna go tomorrow and tonight. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I mean, I don't really care much for Baby Driver, so yeah, I don't uh, either. Yeah, uh, uh, tomorrow and tonight is it's it's really similar to their you know the the early records. Definitely sound like David yeah. right in that it. It sounds like a uh, a song that he may have written, you know, in those er in that early Kiss period, maybe even Wicked Lester, um, and uh, and you know, probably you know, uh, and, and and he's also right about you know being on the road. It's tough to write songs, and um, I'm sure that he was, you know, uh, uh, you know, stripping the archive for for material. So th <laughs> this very well could have been that uh, an example of that. Yep. Chad, uh, I think the vocal on Baby Driver is great, but I'm going to go tomorrow and tonight. Wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> You're going Baby Driver? It's amazing how many times a human could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, everybody craps on, on the song Baby Driver. I, I always liked that song, man, from the from the beginning. For I don't know why, but the, the, yeah, the vocal is great. Vocal's and, great. You know, I'm not arguing yeah. that. 
And um, I don't know, it's just got a cool groove to it. And it seems uh, a little more put together than uh, tomorrow and tonight. A little, a little bit, a uh, little bit more for me there. Mr. Ellison. I think I got to agree with Don on this one. Ooh. I don't really like either of them, to be honest with you. They're not, to me, they're, they're fast. They're the clunkers. Yeah. And, and again, this is one of the two that, that Peter sings. I, I'm not a, I, Peter's voice. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I, and when he's, when he does it great, he's fucking amazing. I mean, obviously Beth and there's, you know, nothing to lose and stuff like that. He's, yeah. 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 Great. You know, so it's a lot. I don't, I don't like him when he sings the harder stuff. It's just not where I don't think he fit. His voice doesn't sit that well there, but yeah, the track is recorded. Well, it's thick, it's tough sounding. Um, and, um, yeah, and again, tomorrow and tonight, it just eh, seems a little sophomoric high school kind of, you know, check out my second song I wrote for my first band kind of song. It's just <laughs> like it the majority of the away. Kiss songs in the 70s. Yeah, it just, it just doesn't <laughs> blow me away. Like you say, Wicked yeah, yeah. Western, like it sounds like it was something yeah, yeah. way back in the archives. It doesn't sound like something like, dude, guys, check out this rad new tune I just wrote. It doesn't sound like that. It's a, it sounds like an archival song. Yeah, it sounds like it's like rock and roll all night, but not as good, you know. Yeah. Rock and yeah, roll, yeah. rock and roll tomorrow and tonight in ladies' room service. Do they, well, they, they should do mashups <laughs> of these songs. I, I know from experience too. When you've written a hit and certainly something that the level of rock and roll all night, um, you know, you're going to always want to try to go back and recreate that. You know, and I mean, shout it out loud was was probably that same attempt on Destroyer, and and they hit the yeah. mark on that one. I mean, they yeah. definitely killed that one. But yeah, you're kind of always going, what was that magic we had? And and um, I watched a great thing on Behind the Vinyl. I think Randy Bachman talked about it, trying to go back and trying to recreate that. And you never really do because it's just right. this moment in in the in life where all the particles of the universe came together for that one moment, and you can never really captured again it's just it was that moment and so uh, yeah you're right i think when bands try to go back and try to rewrite that success it, it doesn't happen a second time all right jumping to side two and i think this is going to be a zach morris no-brainer all the way around for all five of us love them leave them versus love gun yeah love gun yeah yeah i love gun yeah yeah, yeah. however love gun, just I, so only. i've caught myself writing that's that na, 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 that sort of bouncing static bump bump ba, da, 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 that sort yeah. of pace with that na, na, this big kind of like and i and it's funny for the longest time to go where the hell did i get that from that it's stuck in my head i can't get rid of it and then i one day i listened to this I'm like, oh my god there it is i didn't know if it was from 38 special or mm -hmm. stars or angel or like where the hell did that <laughs> riff come in my life now i've now i've spotted it you know well, it's weird that that was one of the videos that they did. Yeah. You yeah. know, just shocks me. Um, Hooligan. Just, just for the there. solo, just for the solo, the song Love Gun is better. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I put Love Gun up there with top five Paul, St Paul Stanley songs of all time. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, yeah, I, I think I it's agree. really strong. Top of the, yep, top of the heap. Yep, I agree. Now we got Mr. Speed versus Hooligan. Can I, I go? I love Hooligan, but Mr. Speed's just so damn good. It's great. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Hooligan is the best vocal Peter Chris ever did. Wow. It's just something about his delivery on that. Better than Black Diamond. Yeah. Yeah. For me. Yeah. It's just, it, he, that song sounds like he really fucking means it. Yeah. Yeah. So that I, means you're I, picking I Hooligan? on that one. I'm picking I, I, Hooligan. Wow. Hooligan, Hooligan is that song where Peter, that's his pocket, man. He really Yeah, you know what I mean? I got I a 35 Chevy on a 55 Motley crane. Crew, yeah. Remember Motley Crue wrote Hooligan on that first <laughs> yeah. John Karabi record? Yeah. All I could think of was the Kiss song, Hooligan. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> and Motley did a pretty good version of their Hooligan, whatever that, yeah. Hooligan's Holiday, right? Yeah. Oh, God, we could, do a, we could do a whole show on that fucking record. <laughs> I, I love that record. Yeah. Uh, and I so, loved it. I remember when I was in a band, I was literally like, you know, probably 13 or yeah, literally like 13. And I was playing with these 16 year old guys and the guitar player could play Mr. Speed. It's a freaking complex. It's the Holy Wars for Kiss. You know? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. a great fucking tune. It's a way complex a great riff. part. The bass playing is great. I mean, the song is put together very well, but now that you're A, B and those, those two, I would agree. Hooligans the win. Wow. 
Wow. Hey, just saying. It could be because of Peter. I think Peter's. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's all about the delivery on that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Wow. Andre. No, I'm, I'm Mr. Speed. I'm, I'm a, a kid. I'm a Paul fan. I, I can't, uh, I can't take away. I mean, I think Paul trumps Peter, you know, nine times out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with you, except in this case. Wow. I, that, this one really is, is shocking the fuck out yeah, of me. Don James, Don Jameson is a deciding vote. Cause I went Mr. Speed. Yeah, it's, um, uh, I always like the song again. Um, this is another song that is not super popular with Kiss fans, but um, I've always liked it. I got to see Peter play it live Whoa. about 10 years ago at uh, one of the Eddie Trunk, you know, I've been in radio 35 years party <laughs> at the Hard Rock. <laughs> and uh, David, you might've even been there. Where was that at? Which one? The Hard Rock in New York. Were you there that night? I wasn't. Night? No, I, wa I wasn't. I wasn't at that one. I, I, it was I, like I, uh, Scotty. On tour or something. Yeah, it was huge, right? It was massive. Frankie yeah. Bello, Bumblefoot. Yeah. And they played Hooligan with Peter. And um, that was really amazing to, to see him do that. But at the end of the day, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna have to jump over and, and pick Mr. Speed. Oh, Just wow. To, OK. All right. Better overall tune. All right. Um, almost. I know Chad's Chad's pushing time limit here. I know he has to leave in what five minutes. Yep. Five minutes. I'm a, All right. I'm a, I'm gonna put my next two because it, they're both Gene songs. Uh, see you on Love my, Gun. So see, we're going there. All right. So see you. Human and dream. plaster. I'm in. See you in my dreams versus. And almost. I'm taking plaster caster over hard luck woman. No, okay. you're not. Wow. Again, yes, wrong. I am. Wow. Again, wrong. Wow. Hey, can we just assume that you're going to take making love over there? She kissed me. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I I think you see the theme here. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, Andre. What? Which? Uh, which ones are we on right see, now? You and my dreams versus almost human. Oh, I got to go almost human. I mean, almost human's great. It's got, it's got the, the creepiness of the, um, it's almost like a horror film. That song is, uh, yeah. it's got some real jungle horror film qualities to it. I love it. Another, another cool guitar. Uh, uh, you know, I was listening to the solo earlier today. I'd forgotten how, you know, it's, it's backwards solo, I believe. And right. parts of it are backwards. Uh, I, I love the uh, the experimental aspect of Almost Human. I think it's got some real, you know, real creepy qualities to it, and it fits Gene's character to a T. Mr. Jameson, right. you out? I bounce. All right, Bye, Chad. boys. I'll see you. Have a good you, Have a good holiday. You, Chad. Take care, brother. Chad good Stewart, faster pussy cack it. P pussy cack. Pussy cack. And act a tribute to Ace Freely. Anyways, so. <laughs> so you're uh you're almost human oh yeah yeah mr jameson i think uh, andre said it perfectly i agree 100 percent. you know it's uh it's it's classic gene but it's experimental for kiss uh, you know i like i sort of like it's a, a little we a little kind of a weird kiss song and um definitely just overall better song so we're going almost human as much as I love See You in My Dreams on Gene's solo record, I love fucking Almost Human so much better. So I got to go Almost Human. Almost Human was never my jam. I never liked it. Um, See You in Your Dreams is great. And I do especially love it on the on Gene's solo record with Rick Nielsen playing on it. Fucking oh, amazing, yes. Right? Yes. Super cool. And on here, I just think it's a better song. I mean, okay. it, it sucks that it lines up tit for tat. It's funny. I never liked right. Almost Human. Almost Human to me sounds like something would be on, as we would then later learn, like music for the elder or music for the elder. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's, it's too... It's too cool to be on music for the elder. <laughs> it, it's not got a thunder, and it's not that it's a bad song. It's right? just I don't know, lined up next to this one. I I just love Senior Dreams. To me, it's a more memorable, singable, walk around the house singing it after you heard it kind of song. But this is why I love doing it like this instead of just going, "Oh, I just like this record better. I like that record better." When we go yeah. song by song, song versus song, yeah. you really find out which record is better. Right? That's how I personally think about it. Um, plaster caster versus hard luck woman. Plaster caster, hands down. Wow. 
Fuck hard luck woman. I didn't know. <sighs> Yeah, I didn't like it. To me, to me, it was, it was, it was again the formula. Let's go get Beth again, because remember, right. Rock and Roll Over came right after after Destroyer, and of course, you know, Peter wrote Beth, and I'm sure cashed the biggest publishing check of all of them. So now it's the <laughs> right. now it's the race for the publishing thing. Well, I'm going to write one too, you know, and then maybe maybe we'll have Peter sing it, and it'll be a hit a second time. Right. And they didn't cap, they didn't capture Lightning twice, in my opinion. And to me, it seemed. It reeked of a blatant attempt to do that, and in, in, in my mind, I, I look. I was only twelve or thirteen at the time, but I understood that much. And to me, it was like well, I read the, like the lyrics. Sailor's only daughter. What the hell? Get out. Sailor's only daughter. <laughs> Not my deal. Look, like, even as a thirteen-year-old, I got what Plaster Caster was all about. <laughs> I mean, come on. No. <laughs> uh, and, and I didn't. I didn't know until I was like 27. <laughs> Has anyone else read that Paul wrote that for Rod Stewart? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that, and that would that funny that would make sense. And at that point, if you're going to demo it up and pitch it to Rod Stewart, hey Peter, come over here and throw a vocal on this track. <laughs> right. It's done. Right. right. It's then it's a no brainer, right? I, I agree. I don't. I don't think it's a great Kiss song. It brought. If in fact, you know, and again, I know Paul writes other stuff, and I, I love. No one loves Paul's writing more than me, but I just don't think it was a great Kiss song. And and uh, yeah, I think it's a great Rod Stewart song. I agree. <laughs> Andre, <laughs> you know, I I was a uh, I was not a big fan of um, of Hard Luck Woman when I was a kid. I've I've grown to love it because I'm as I've said previously, I'm a huge Paul fan. I'm a Big fan of Paul's songwriting specifically, um, but Plaster Caster definitely is more in the Kiss uh, character, and um, so I'm gonna for that reason I'm gonna have to go with Plaster Caster. It's it's more rock and roll all over. I mean, you know, it's it's just uh, you know the it's cock rock quite literally, and uh, you know it it really fits the um, again it fits the character. Mr. Jameson. Well, I mean, and this is. Uh... You know, you could say this about a lot of Gene songs, but I mean, what the the, the lyrics are so infantile. It, you know, <laughs> plaster caster, grab a hold of me faster. I mean, it, if you want to see my love, if, just ask her. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Although I will say, I do like at the end when he when he changes it up and he goes, she no, she calls me by the name of Master. I kind of like that, but yeah, um, metal. yeah. So uh, so no, I. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't see the connection that Dave sees with, between Beth and Hard Luck Woman. Um, it's just uh, Hard Luck Woman, you know, that's just a, a solid, you know, pop rock hit song, you know, but it wasn't a hit for them. So that's the difference. And, uh, you know, the only weird thing I would say about Hard Luck Woman is like, what kind of name is Rags? I mean, what is that? That's what is she on her period? Is this a song know, about a chick at her time? In Come the on, it, do, it, does, it doesn't make sense, dude. It doesn't add up. There's too many holes in the story. Sorry. You could have said Bags or something, you know? That would have been better, but Rags? That was Reg. Yeah, amazing Rod Stewart song. I agree 100%. Great Rod Stewart song. <laughs> no, I think it's Rags, right? He calls her Rags. Rags. Yeah. Rags. Rags. Sailor's yeah. only Rags. daughter. The sailor's only yeah. daughter. Sailor's okay. only daughter. Yeah. It's like it's like the Brandy or a Fine Girl from Kiss. <laughs> That's a great Maybe. fucking song, though. <laughs> yeah. It's trying, it's trying to be like a Maggie May or something, you know? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Don, does that mean you're going with Plaster Caster? No. <laughs> no, you're going all right. You're going hard luck woman. From what I heard, now correct me if I'm wrong, Izzy, from what I heard, if you A B'd what Don said, Plaster Caster would be the obvious choice. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm I'm not as I I, as much as I love Hard Luck Woman, and as much as I love the Garth Brooks version of Hard Luck Woman, he fucking killed that. I don't care what anybody says. Plaster it is Caster's, a great Garth Brooks song. Yeah. It's absolutely. Just not a good kiss song. I, I mean, I, look, I love the song. I love the song, but Plaster Caster is just so fucking cool. Garth Brooks wouldn't sing Plaster Caster. No, he actually, he probably <laughs> would. Knowing Garth, he probably would. All right. Then we got Making Love versus what a lot of people consider a horrible fucking cover. What yeah. I actually kind of love after actually listening to it again tonight, then she kissed me. 
I don't know, dude. Making love is a pretty metal riff right out of the gate. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. That that's that's just metal guitar riff, right? You know, it was so heavy at the time and so friggin' cool. And yeah. And then and then you talk about translating it over to Kiss Live too. My God, it just amazing, you know. Great, great live track. Yeah. Yeah. yeah David's right. That riff is is super heavy. Um and, you know. Then she kissed me as obviously, you know, they were told by the record company, you got to do a cover and people got in their ear and that's what they ended up with. Um, not a bad shot at it, not a bad stab at, it, at the cover. That's very out of what Kiss would normally do, but now nah, it's, it's all making love. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. In spite, in spite of the date rape lyric, uh, making love. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's great. Great I mean, the, the guitar work in Making Love is is amazing. The solo again, a, a top rate A solo, uh, and and it, the and the song is a fucking jam. Yeah. Um, so it's got. I got to go with Making Love. I am not gonna lie. I, I have to go Making Love too, just because like when I pick up that fucking Les Paul right behind me, that's usually the first riff I play. That song is so fucking amazing. It, oh. Yeah, making love by far, even though I do rather enjoy than she kissed me. And we are sitting with three minutes left in us in the uh in the poll. We're sitting at 58 votes. Um 20 it's it's 50 50 right now. It's literally split right down the middle. And I honestly thought, I honestly thought rock and roll over was gonna win this, but uh love gun seven to three. Wow. So that means yeah. the next one is going to be Love Gun versus Destroyer. Wow, which is going to be a tough one. But I think we'll save that for the we'll save that for the Christmas one for the uh, for the for the fan one, and maybe we'll get a get you know one of the former panelists in from however long ago or now or whatever for that. Um, Dave, before we go, I did I wanted to ask you this when you were talking about Peter's strongest vocal. And Don, I wanted to ask you about this too, because uh, I think, Andre, were you in on the solo record one? I was not. No, I would love to. What uh, What yeah. are your thoughts on the Peter solo record? I think it's terrible. I think it's torture. I think that album is, <laughs> is literal torture. It, it, it's, it's, it's the least, it's the least kiss-like album of the entire catalog all right including including elder and unmasked um uh it's uh it's not a kiss album even even remotely i'm gonna say this before you guys talk about it i i actually love peter's solo record and the reason i do is because i listen to it without thinking of it as a kiss record i just think of it as a 70s pop rock record and it's it's a good record if you don't go into it thinking I'm going to hear fucking black diamond. That's the kind of booger sugar Papa life. I mean, that is, uh, that is the cocaine is, uh, I mean, you can, you can, uh, you almost get a contact high from listening to it. It was so high on powder. It was just uh, how he could even listen to that and think, yeah, this is, this is, this measures up. Uh, cause it's, it's not good. It's not even, huh? remotely good john <laughs> hey listen i i got i got i got into kiss for for many reasons but one of the primary ones was the minute my parents didn't want me to have kiss albums i knew that i loved them forever because that was the idea that your parents aren't supposed to like the bands that you like so when peter chris puts out an album that you know my dad would dance to <laughs> Is uh, you can't even you can't even rate it. So that's a it's, oh, a, it's wow complete misfire. Wow, Dave, I want to hear your thoughts on this. I'm rather excited about this. I I honestly don't remember. It's funny. I'm looking scrolling through my iTunes. I don't remember anything from his record other than I I remember painfully listening to it once and couldn't stand it. And it was just and it was just like you know again I knew this was what it was because. Like the Ace record, top to bottom, every track, a yeah. hit, every track, a slam yeah. dunk. The Paul record, you know, 70% of it, pretty damn good. The Gene record, eh, 30% of it, amazing. Ooh. Kind of, you know, Ooh. obviously it's experimental, whatever. Ooh. And Peter, and Peter just, you know, again, it was, 
you know, I get, I have to think about these solo records again, you know, who, who wrote the least in kiss, you know, was, was probably ACE. Um, and it turns out his solo stuff is freaking amazing, you know? Yeah. Um, so either he didn't bring it in, didn't have the confidence to bring it in, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but it is interesting after shock me, he seemed to like go, Hey, now I'm, now I'm on the radar and people liked what they heard. And I think it was a confidence thing. It gave him the confidence. Yeah. He brought the goods. These are songs he was probably some of them sitting on. Uh, the Peter stuff, look at that stuff he tried to bring into Kiss. No wonder it got shot down. Yeah, and, right. Right. And, 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 um, you know, Gene, I don't think, you know, Gene, what did he care? You know what I mean? Yeah. He, I, he, look, I love I Gene's solo record. I really love that record just because it is all over the place, but it's still fucking. I thought it was too all over the place. I thought it was too, some of it was a little too campy. Uh, in my opinion, but again, I, I you know, you, you hear the stories now, and it was basically Ace was going to leave the band, and I think it was Gene's idea, like, hey, yeah. don't leave the band, we'll do, we'll do solo records. Right, so right. you kind of have to take it now in hindsight that, you know, and I will say this: it does show very, they very shows very four different colors of those guys, and and if nothing else, those, I, I look at them as a collection. I can't look at it each, as each individual because right. they all came out together that they sort of these are the four pillars of of the kiss fucking house if you will and yeah and it does show that the character like i know girls who love the peter chris album when i was you know because people like oh peter he's the cat oh i love cats <laughs> you know he was kind of like the lovely guy you know that right. <laughs> the girls all got mushy around them you know <laughs> um, so yeah. I, don't, I think they just had different they did they they, they knowing that it was an attempt to keep the lineup together um, before everybody, it started the the house crumbled. Um, I, I I as a as a collection, I give it an A plus because it was it was it was brilliant to put out four solo records. Because usually a guy leaves, Michael Schenker leaves UFO, somebody leaves the band. Fuck those guys, I'm going to go solo. You know, right. so uh, <laughs> I can appreciate what they tried to do with those records. You know, right. and and also li the literal colors. That came with it, David. Don't forget, yeah. because that's when the colors all started with the green and the, yeah, the, red, yeah. and, and the red and all that stuff. So yeah. you got that out of it as well. I think in that too. My favorite part of the Gene record was the cover. His cover was fucking evil. Oh, the I little mean, blood coming. Oh yeah, it's I know it was so rad. You know the, yeah. the cover photos of those records are just iconic. I mean, they're perfect. They're iconic. Uh, just I, uh, Don, I know you got to go, so we're going to wrap up here. Uh, just a couple comments really quick from the chat room. Uh, Dick Chasen says, especially I Can't Stop the Rain is a great song. I agree. Uh, he also says cocaine is also responsible for some of the greatest albums of all time. I also agree. And uh, Tall Bear says, so Don's whole career is a Peter Chris solo record. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Very hurtful. Oh, there we go. Um, uh, let's do this uh, really quick. Uh, Andre, is there anything you need to promote? Well, actually, yeah, we're um, we're gonna put out a, a live album on um, on uh, David Ellison's uh, EMP label group. Uh, we're gonna we we did it, uh, it it back in the fall, and uh, we're gonna put out the live record probably in the beginning of the new year. Very nice. Jameson, you got the obviously uh, Denim and Laughter, which is available now, and you can he hear bring this. Izzy Presley on intro. That's right. That's right. You got any uh, live shits coming up that hasn't been canceled? Uh, we got a live stream this Saturday. Myself and Jim Florentine go to watchnowlive.com. We'll be live from Maine, the comedy capital of America. Love it. Mr. Ellison, pimp the record one more time. Where can they get it? Enjoy some combat oh. napalm in the morning coffee. I need uh, to try this. I, I need, I forgot, I forgot to get some at NAM. I'm rather disappointed in myself. Yeah, yeah but that it, just came out. We just, we just, we just came out with that. We want to have a okay. new coffee by Christmas. So we came up with the combat one. And then you the no cover record. Um, and again, just like we're doing here, digging back into the record collection, pulling out deep cuts. You know, we, we, we didn't go for Beth and right. Stray Rock City. We went for, you know, you know the, the the deeper cuts on this show. It's it's been a lot of fun to have that. Well, uh, if you do another one of those, you do another kiss song. Call up your pal Izzy. He would love to play on it. Okay. 
Just saying. Almost human. Throwing it out there. Whatever. <laughs> Dude, whatever. I, whatever. Okay. I got an Israeli tribute band. I'm good, man. Whatever. <laughs> um, and I, I think it's it's safe to say that, I mean, all three of us, except for Andre, of course, um, we're on the on the mega cruise. Then we went through Nam. I think we're safe. I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know how or what or where or whatever, but yeah. I mean, look, just yeah. Yet at the same time, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to tempt fate. I know we we're on tour in Europe, literally on that Five Finger Megadeth tour, like literally a week or two ahead of COVID. I mean, everywhere uh -huh. it was coming up right behind us. We got home. Sons of Apollo got home okay. Those that San Francisco Bay Area tour, they got nicked, you know. So I know who mm -hmm. knows. I mean, who knows? I yeah. mean, it's definitely not something to mess with, man. Sit home, let's ride it out for another couple of months, and hopefully we'll be through it and it'll we'll be ready to rock by the summer, you know. All right, let's hold on. We'll uh, say goodbye off the air. Just let me hit the outro really quick and get through this spiel. Next week we will be back. I don't know with what, but we'll figure something out as I always do. Make sure you hit up all the social media at Real Lizzie Presley all the way across the board, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And uh, as we're doing that, why don't you guys give out your social media so you guys can hit you guys up. They need to. DavidAllison.com. Everything there. There you go. AndreComoMusic.com. JonJameson.com. Easy peasy. Uh, if you guys want to donate to the show, you do enjoy what I do. Hit me up on PayPal, IzzyPresley at Yahoo.com. Also on the uh, that Venmo thing, Real Izzy Presley, Cash App, dollar sign Izzy Presley. We know all the stuff. And yes, Thursday night, 9 p.m. Hotel California time, midnight Eastern time, where they only think their pizza is God. The new merch is available for Black Friday, and it is going to make you want to vomit, but you will need to have it. It is going to be amazing. We will see you guys next. Yeah, Jesus Christ, I'm fucking sober and I'm messing up. Whatever. I love it. We'll see you guys next week. My name is Izzy Presley. This is another fucking podcast. Drunken Summit. Where I lack in talent, I make up for in cop.